Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Test Automation Engineer Certification. We are getting started with chapter four that is implementing the test automation. And as a part of this tutorial, we are stepping into the very first segment that is 4.1, the test automation development. And here we will be trying to understand that how exactly the pilot projects can be executed as a part of the test automation development. As a part of this particular topic, we are getting started with the very first segment where we are trying to understand the guidelines which can be applied for effective test automation pilots and deployment of that. The very first and foremost important thing here we are trying to help you understand is when we have defined and designed, like so far in the past three chapters, we are going step by step. We first understood what are the benefits and risk involved in using an automation. Then we understood how exactly do we prepare to implement test automation. Then we understood what is the test automation solution, the architecture, the various components, the scripting methods, etc. Now it's time for us to roll it out. That is implementing them. But at the same time, we should understand what are those factors which we should take into account while rolling out this tool for the first time which probably the team has never experienced before. So there are specific guidelines need to be taken into account. And some of the things have been fundamentally cleared in the foundation level itself. So you can very much correlate them. To get started with the very first thing here we are talking about is that when it comes to uh, implementing or effective use of test automation pilot, it is very important to define the scope of validation for a test automation pilot. A pilot project does not take a long time to conduct but the outcome may have significant impact on the direction that the project takes. Remember one important thing, right? We do say that when we find a tool for the project or for the organization, or maybe a solution which is defined for the entire automation approach, we may have a specifications for it. So we may start with the PLC, which we would have identified for different tools. Then we put it up together to call it as our test automation solution. And then we, give it to one project to start using it. And that's what we refer to it as pilot project. But again, a pilot project may not have every single corner to be checked for this particular tool or this particular solution. We may have to define a specification to it that what exactly are we interested in? And as far as these are fulfilled, I can consider the solution as a solution to our automation. And that is where it is very important for us to determine otherwise it would take a long time and at the end of the day, you may not have something specific as a goal being defined or what exactly to be measured that how can we judge this solution is relevant, corresponding to what we need or it is something which is not really doing anything as a benefit for us. So having this defined will make more sense to evaluate your pilot project outcomes and will give you the directions for the next steps in your project. Further to add, of course, uh, we talk about based on the information gathered from the SUT and the requirement on the project, the following should be evaluated to set up the guidelines to optimize the test automation effort. That includes things like, which are very commonly known to us, programming languages that will be used, suitable commercial off the self or open source tool, test levels to cover, test cases selected, and test case development approach. Programming languages and Suitable tools and open source uh, commercial of the self are all discussed and easy to understand. Test levels to cover, we are trying to say that uh, what are the test levels we are trying to target through this automation solution. Because it's not necessarily the solution what you've defined is applicable to every different level which we conduct as a part of the life cycle. Sometimes we might have initiated this solution to be provided only for unit testing. And after the success of unit testing, we would look forward to extend it to the next level like integration or maybe for acceptance or maybe for any other. So it's not necessary that you try to cover up all the test levels at the same time. You always start with some limited test levels to be covered as a part of the solution as a part of pilot project. And based on the outcomes, you further define that how can we extend this to the next level. Same way the test cases to be selected is all about, we may not be able to automate every single type of test case. Right? So you might have shortlisted some test cases which you are interested in to see this behavior in the pilot project. That how exactly, what effort, what amount of activities are required to automate them. So what is the significant cost involved in doing so? And then we take out the ratio of automating the rest of the test. So your test case selection also matters to us. And finally, one more point, which is the test case development approach. 
remember we would have discussed in the foundation a little bit that uh, it's also possible that you might have written high level test cases and if in case you have used high level test cases like for exploratory it's hard and difficult to automate but if you have used a detailed test case approach for test case writing that is low level you find it easy to automate because in automation every single step has to be automated in high level test cases i if i get one line as well i can use my expertise i can use my domain knowledge to execute them but when it comes to automation automation will not see one line as a automation script it would certainly do one by one each and every activity on the application just like a human does it right we cannot just book a flight by saying one line correct so that's where it is very important to understand what is the approach or method used to write your test cases was it high level or low level and how much more effort we need to put because if in case you have used high level then you would have additional efforts to be applied to break them down into simplified steps before you can automate it so considering all these above points we can certainly uh, look at the test automation engineer who can define an initial approach to follow now based on the requirements several different initial prototypes can be created to show the pros and cons of the different approaches from there the ta can decide which path to move forward with which is certainly a very straightforward thing to understand that given these pointers are well identified i can make my initial plan of action that how exactly i would move ahead and what could be the steps to be taken also to add here of course defining timelines is an important part of meeting schedule and ensuring the success of the pilot a common recommendation is to periodically check on the progress of the pilot project to identify any risk and mitigate them so it's not that pilot is a open ended session you need to have a fixed timeline to define that for what duration we would like to run this pilot like maybe for a month two month or three months and based on that we would like to collect the statistics so selecting the matrices which you want to monitor is equally important and this given timeline you would be consistently monitoring that how exactly the tool is performing and based on that you would be judging the outcome of the pilot project so two important things having it time bounded or time boxed is very important and second important thing is certainly the definition of the matrices which you want to collect right because these are the matrices which will help you monitor the ongoing progress and at any point of time if you observe a significant deviation or any kind of risk which are related to the tool or the solution which you have rolled out you can take appropriate actions to mitigate them because this could also be one of your lessons learned from the tool pilot project that is what kind of risk are unforeseen which we could not observe before rolling out the tool but during the execution we identified it so don't forget pilot projects are always to have in depth knowledge of any kind of solution okay we try to understand what those things are which we could not judge prior to rolling them out so moving on to the next part of it of course to continue further uh, during the pilot it is also recommended to try to integrate the solution and the all uh, and the already implemented code into ci cd this may expose issues early either in the sut the tas or the overall integration of different tools within the organization the most important thing is again ci cd is optional it's not necessary that your team or your project is looking forward to have or you already have a devops rolled out into your organization remember one thing devops is an organization level implementation if you think your organization is already using devops then this is one of the pointer you need to consider about that during the pilot project itself you can try integrating your solution to that of the devops ci cd and try to find issues related to that because you may have some of the issues related to suit or related to the solution provided or the issues can be related to any kind of integrations with the other tool chains but it is completely optional if your organization does not follow devops then maybe this can be skipped additionally to add here of course as the number of test cases grows test automation engineer can think about changing the initial ci cd setup to run the test in the different ways and at different times this is just a continuation to that of the previous point if in case required uh, we will be doing that but again not necessary for the organization who do not follow the devops additionally uh, also during the pilot project there is a need to evaluate other non technical aspects such as the knowledge and the experience of the team members the team structure licensing and organization rule the type of planned testing and targeted test levels to cover 
during the automation of test cases. Number one, the knowledge and experience of the team member. It certainly matters to me because we will be getting exposed to uh, the programming language, utilizing a tool, and you can always see that there are organizations who are completely new to a tool. Okay, probably they have never used a tool before. So I cannot make a blind judgment that how can a team would need to understand that what is the experience of the people and knowledge of the technology. It is also possible that the team has never used a tool before. So they might take more time or kind of support in terms of training and mentorship to get the hold of it. And this is not something which we consider technically. These are all top up additional requirements which we need to monitor and consider. Because when they start using it, that is where we understand where the people is getting stuck, where exactly the people need support, how much they are really good at the programming and maintaining these automation solutions. That would add a lot of value in your cost determination and at the same time, the efficiency, what you will get from the automation solution. The second point here, of course, is the team structure. The team structure matters in multiple ways. How your team is distributed. How much collaboration do we have between the development team and the testing team? For example, in order to automate things, I certainly need a close collaboration with the developers because the developer will let us know what kind of objects are being created, what are the unique properties we have, and how exactly it has been structured. So it will help me to identify an object to write an automation script. But if I'm working very distributed, maybe very, very independent from the development team, we will have a lot of challenges collaborating with the developers in order to understand the internal structure, which can help me to write the automation scripts. Point number three, that is licensing and organization rules. Sometimes just because of compliances, a very good tool can also be rejected. Why? Because compliance would come and tell you that, hey, this tool does not have a, a multi-factor authentication. And as per organization security policies, we believe in multi-factor authentication. So maybe your tool is very good, but as per the organization policies, we don't authorize it. And finally, of course, the types of uh, plan testing and target test levels to cover during the automation of test cases, which we have discussed just a moment back. So it would make more sense that here we would try to understand the types of testing as well, like re uh, regression testing uh, or functional testing or performance testing, etc. So you can refer to them or white box or black box. What kind of types of testing you are looking forward to automate? So we can consider every single factor into account while determining the goals of the pilot project for the automation. And finally, to add, of course, uh, once the pilot project is complete, the effort should be evaluated by test automation engineers and the test managers to assess the success or failure and make an appropriate decision. At the end of the pilot project, you would have all the statistics what you need in order to make a decision that did the pilot project go well or was it not up to the mark? Because it's not necessary the solution what we provide is always going to be appropriate. Mm -hmm. However, we take a lot of considerations into account before we roll out a change or roll out some solutions like this. But it's always possible that a pilot project may not succeed. So based on the data collected, based on the evaluations done, we would make a final decision once the pilot project completes, whether to go with solutions uh, which is provided or is there anything else we need to do in order to make it better, right? So conclusion will be done together by having the test automation engineers and managers sitting together to discuss on that. So with that, we come to the conclusion that what exactly should be done when it comes to the pilot project of test automation solutions when they are implemented with the organization and the teams. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.